Hello and welcome back to the Astro Imaging Channel. Uh, tonight, what I had hoped to do was tell you about all the great things that I saw at Neat. But unfortunately, this year, uh, I was not able to make it. Uh, it's driving me nuts. So um, I had heard about one or one product so far that uh, was uh, introduced, and it's going to be pretty cool. And I'll I'll show off a little bit of, uh, and possibly have a little discussion on because uh, we were talking before about it. Uh, but um, as I'm doing this, uh, anybody that was at Neef that saw something really interesting, type it into chat, and uh, we could uh, talk about it. Or if you would like to, uh, over the week, send me an email. Uh, about uh, wh whether you saw cool products or took some photos of some stuff. Uh, see if you can give me some content uh, for a future show. Uh, that said, uh, the main part of today, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to process an image that uh, I've been wanting to reprocess for a long time. I know uh, the last time I processed, uh, I just kind of did a full walkthrough of that processing. A lot of people said, oh, good. Uh, we're back to processing, which is why a lot of people watch this channel. Uh, it's how we started off. Uh, but of course, before we go into that, I do want to show off our image of the week. Uh, oh, you're not looking at that, are you? Nope. This is tough. I say it every week, but it's uh, tough figuring out which window I want to share. Uh, this week's image of the week, M20 by Diego Colanello. Um, so uh, he used a 10-inch uh, F4 Klaus Hamrich CF tube imaging camera, uh, carbon fiber tube, uh, with a ZWO 1600, ZWO 1600 uh, tack mount. Uh, either way, uh, good equipment, uh, great image. Uh, as always, uh, thank you guys for submitting your images. Um, the, uh, there is a bug, uh, I spoke with, uh, or I, I got an email from Diego about this, um, for some reason, some images just won't convert to thumbnails, uh, but I do see most of them on the back end, a couple of them don't show up, but, uh, I see 99% of them on the back end. This is one of them, and, uh, it's working on the front end, so, congrats, Diego, uh, let me see. There we go. Uh, okay. This is uh, one of the things that Dylan pointed out. Um, that Celestron introduced at Neath. I don't know if this is going to work. If you cannot see the whole image uh, of the... Uh, Tube here, uh, let me know. Uh, this is the Celestron uh, RASA, R A S A, Roe Ackerman Schmidt Astrograph. Um, but this is a 14 inch RASA. Uh, in the past, uh, I believe, uh, what was it, the uh, nine and a quarter and 11 inches were available, uh, or maybe it was just 11 inch. I I'm actually not sure on that. Um, but they've gone bigger. And uh, this one is at f2.2, I believe, uh, which gives you, uh, let's go to the specs here, um, focal length of 790, uh, 790 millimeters. Uh, so you are getting a fairly longer focal length of 790 uh, at a very fast f2.2. Uh, really, uh, really interesting. Uh, almost cooler than that is the image circle is 60.1 millimeter, which means you can basically use any sensor that you could buy out there. Uh, that's, that's really, really large. So, um, you could use a really, really large sensor on it and accumulate the photons at a really fast rate. Uh, but... One of the very cool things that we noticed on the back here was uh, a new and improved focusing system, which on uh, 
the Raza, I, I mean, at that price and at this level of, of uh, telescope, you're probably going to want a, a really rock solid focusing system. Uh, and I'm going to assume that at f 2.2, any uh any shift at all whether it's uh introduced by the focusing system or uh by wherever it is is really going to make a big difference it's, it's going to have to be perfectly collimated um but uh new focusing system which i immediately thought wow i wonder if that might trickle its way down into some of the scts uh so we'll see uh, I don't know, but uh, it would be cool if it did. Uh, that uh, even though it's never really with the mirror locks, there are ways around uh, having any sort of uh, shift or anything like that. Uh, but um, it's interesting. Immediately, what popped into my head? Ooh, I wonder if that's going to trickle down. Okay, let me see. Did that give me my screen back? Yes, it did. Uh, so I'm going to jump into uh, some processing immediately. Um, I'm going to share my full screen. There you go. And uh, right now you should see my Pix <coughs> Insight window. If you uh, if you don't, let me know. Looks so, great. Thank you. So. Um, I took this image a couple uh, years ago, uh, more than a couple, 2014, uh, so uh, four years ago, and um, it was probably what I consider one of my most impressive images, and uh, I've actually uh, sold this particular image a few times, which made me really, uh, I don't know, every time you sell something, you're kind of happy. Um, and uh, just the other day, I sold it again, which uh, made me even happier. Uh, so I pulled it up on my computer screen because I had to actually order the print the way they wanted it. And um, I noticed a few things I didn't quite like about it. Uh, my stars are kind of ugly. Uh, there, there's some gold stars in there, but the blue are just oversaturated. And um, short of that, the nebula, I think, is basically amazing. Uh, I, I did a great job on that. Um, even the background, uh, I, I feel like I did a really good job on, but those stars just kind of drive me nuts. So I really wanted to jump in and kind of improve it and uh, the focus being not having the stars turn so blue. Uh, and I did, um, and I didn't quite nail it, but what I'll do is I'll walk, I'll do another run through, but you can see I, I processed it once. Uh, I processed it twice, uh, and uh, I'm going to process it a third time and try and take uh, the best of each. Uh, what, what, do, what do I like of this? I love the colors here. Uh, I love the soft feel. It's just kind of uh, out there in space. I love how I was able to bring the blues in. Um, and, and the nebula, like, there's literally no noise, but it looks natural. Uh, but those stars, they kill me. Uh, so let's see if I could do a walkthrough with the intent being uh, try and hit that color palette. Um, after looking at that one and then coming back to this one, this one, I'm not crazy about it. In fact, now I'm a little bit worried because I thought this one looked better before I really compared it side by side to that. But let's see what I could do. Um, two channels here. This is by color. Uh, I have my H alpha and my O3. I'll show you what's in them. Um, obviously, I'm using a screen transfer function. I'm using the hotkey for it just so we can quickly get an idea. Uh, H-alpha had a lot of data. Very, very clean. Uh, almost no perceivable noise um, in the nebula uh, at, at about that scale. Um, O3, as always, uh, just kind of a very weak signal. So... That's the issue. Uh, I've got to work with a weak O3 signal and try and uh, preserve all the detail that I can from this and work all the color that I possibly can out of this image to uh, uh, basically get me that color palette I'm looking for. Uh, so uh, I have that. Uh, I'm going to try not to be so beginner in this one. I always try and explain every tool, but uh, 
if, if you don't know what I'm doing, uh, go to a, a one of our past walkthroughs. Uh, so I, I, I'm not going to explain exactly what the screen transfer function does. Uh, quickly, it lets me look at what's in the image while it's still linear. That's all I'm going to say. Um, Histogram transformation. Uh, this is how I'm going to take it from that image to uh, basically the way I want. Uh, I have used um, mask stretch in the past uh, on this particular image. Uh, and I, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try not to use mask stretch uh, because I think it might let me control it a little bit better or at least control some of the stars a little bit better so that I can kind of uh, keep them maybe under control. And uh, it is possible after doing this, I'm going to change my mind. Uh, but let's see. Let's see. Uh, so I've got that too far. Uh, I need to bring my black level down. If anyone has any questions, ask them on the fly. Um, I am just going to kind of do my thing here. Bringing the black level down. I like the way that looks. Right there. Got my H alpha nonlinear. Now you'll you'll notice that I didn't really do anything to this when it was uh, linear. Uh, I do not have a um, gradient. Uh, it's pretty darn good data. Uh, after I stretched it out pretty far, a little bit of noise worked into the edges here, but not much. And I don't want to touch that yet because I want to preserve as much detail as possible. Um, I did a great job preserving the detail on that first image. Uh, I want to do that on the second image. Um, O3 channel, a bit more difficult because... Uh, there's not much O3 up there. In, in almost every image, um, you're, you're stretching the O3 farther. You'll also notice that I'm doing a nonlinear combination on this, or I'm working towards a nonlinear combination on this. Uh, so unlike the last image that I processed, which was a bicolor, but I went for a natural palette, uh, this, the palette, is much more... Um, well, I should say it's not really associated with any, uh, anything. I'm just kind of trying to make it look Hubble palette-ish. Let's see. Reset the tool. Yeah, I'm really having to stretch this uh, out. Hopefully, what the heck's going on? Am I doing something wrong here? Hopefully, you guys see what I'm doing. Just go back and forth with this. Uh, at some point, I might choose to use curves, but I want to. I'm going to do that when I just want to preserve uh, all those low, all that low end data. Um, even now, my concern is that the stars might have gotten overstretched a little bit, but uh, that's one of those things I'm prepared to work on. Uh, So what I'm looking at right now is that's that three star system right there. Um, I say three star system. Those three stars right there, because uh, by looking at the separation, it lets me see exactly how blown out they are. And this did go a little bit too far, uh, so I am going to. 
bring it back to right there, and I'm going to use curves from here. Maybe I'll be able to um, pull a bit out without uh, the stars. Actually, you know what I'll, I'll do? Uh, I'm going to actually put a star mask on it. This is that uh, that process. Uh, just kind of going with the data. I'm letting the data take me. I, I'm processing it in a completely different way than I did uh, the last two times. Uh, so I'm letting the data kind of take me where it wants to go and uh, kind of see the pants processing. And I always hate doing star masks live because they take a long time. But oh well. And Processing you, takes a long time. Do you normalize your three different um, source data uh, here within PI, or do you end up in Photoshop at the end of the day? Um, so because I'm doing a nonlinear combine, I'm not doing it this time. Uh, if I were doing normally, I would yes, uh, like do a um, uh, a linear fit. Uh, if I uh, actually, I, I would say most of the time I would do it that way. Uh, sometimes, in this case, uh, when I want to be, uh, when I really want to like kind of push the data where I want it to go. Uh, I'll particularly the color. Uh, I'll do it nonlinear. I'll do the nonlinear combine. So let's see how this star mask looks. Uh, mask invert. Uh, is it, I don't know if I'm getting protection on that UFO star, but it might be good. Let's try a curves uh, first. Let's hide the mask. Uh, let's do curves transformation. Uh, so you can always see what you're working with. The dark right here shows up right about there. Uh, and I like that. I want that dark to stay right where it is. So I'm going to put that anchor point in. Uh, the bright star uh, all the way up there. So I don't even have to anchor that. That's close enough to up there. Uh, but this, this is what I want to pull out. I want to pull out that and that. So I've got to lift that up. Oh, and I want to preview it. Uh, let's put that back down. Let's lift that back up. And you can see I'm just bringing out that uh, brightness throughout there. Uh, I know as I get up here, what I'm touching more of is the stars. Uh, so maybe I can give it a kind of soft bend there. Um, I just want to see. If I can keep that curve nice and smooth. I can kind of keep that data from getting kind of noisy um, or just odd looking. Uh, so there is, uh, goes from that to that. I'm basically looking to see if the stars have moved, have blown up much, and I stars haven't blown up much. And the uh, nebulosity came out a bit. Uh, I'm still going to do some stuff to uh, push this data where I want it to go. Um, but let me lock that in. Uh, So I still have the star mask on it. Uh, I am going to do another curves that hopefully will be just a little bit gentler. Brighten it up a bit more. Maybe I'll pull down right there and right there. So I've got it a little bit brighter. 
Um, so that is where I'm at with that. Uh, I'm going to remove the star mask. And uh, you can see I've allowed it to get very noisy. Um, don't worry. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I don't have to be careful. Uh, I can really just uh, do uh, any type of noise reduction that I want. Uh, so I'm going to use ACDNR, which uh, will be good for this presentation because you can actually visualize a lot of it uh, easier, uh, easier than some of the uh, tools like TGVD noise. Uh, ACDNR uh, allows you to apply it to lightness or chrominance. Since it's a monochrome image, I don't need the chrominance, uh, so I'm just using lightness. Uh, I uh, obviously click apply. I click lightness mask because down here it allows me to make a lightness mask. Uh, I just check preview and click the preview window and I can see. Uh, now remember this is a big mushy noisy image. Um, there's noise all over the place. Well this is the preview with the noise reduction and you can see here very very noisy. Uh, I want to be pretty aggressive with this. Uh, so, uh, I'm just going to get a little bit of, uh, protection. First of all, I want my protection around the stars, uh, a little bit of protection about, uh, around the nebulosity, but not so much. Uh, I do want it all to be noise reduced. Uh, uh, so I uncheck the preview. I can apply that there. And uh, I got a uh, good chunk of that noise out. Uh, there's the old version and the new version. The noise uh, gets a little bit of a funky pattern occasionally in ACDNR. Uh, let me see. Could be my standard deviation. Yes, uh, I am going to redo that noise reduction. Uh, I'm going to redo that noise reduction with a lower standard deviation. Let me just want to test it out. Is that the um, bubbly sort of pattern that you get sometimes? When yes. It's heavy? Yes. Um, and I could probably do uh, two passes on it. Uh, let me see. Can't test two passes in this window, though. You know what? It doesn't matter. And you'll see why in a, in a little bit. Um, uh, preview. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna. I am gonna bring the standard deviation down uh, just a bit. Um, I'm gonna leave the amount there, and I'm gonna apply it to the image. Um, <clears throat> now I am going to take this star mask, put it back on. And uh, one more little boost with curves because my only opportunity to get like that rich color uh, is to have information in this channel, is to really have that stuff stand out. Otherwise, I'm working with one color channel. Um, if it was just stars in here, then the nebula would be whatever color it's that that particular channel is assigned to. And if I say split the H alpha and the O3 in another channel, but there isn't any nebulosity here, um, it's not, you're not getting any variety of color. Um, so that's the spot right there. Got to preview it. 
Uh, that's a spot I want to bring up. want to keep those down. Uh, oh, and I can see a little. Hmm. I can see some residuals in the stars and I'm not liking. I like what happens when I bring it up, but I don't like the residuals I'm getting in the stars. That is not the prettiest. Well, now I am going to start all over because I didn't like what was going on. Yes. It seems like what's happening is the uh, brightness of the nebula here is uh, showing off some of the circles around the stars from the star mask. So a better star mask might have made that. Let me try this. Let me remove the mask. Reset the tool. Okay, I'm liking that a lot better. Uh, there we go. And I even think, uh, let me pull this down a little bit more. Can I get away with one more pass on that? I will try. Um, so let's see here. Oops, don't want to close that. Uh, let me... Now this is my combination from my last image, which is still open in the background or in one of the other workspaces. So I have to uh, change the designations of the identifiers, I should say, and uh, combine them and see what happens. Um, wow, that actually gives me a decent amount to work with. That's great. And you can see um, the stars are not ugly. <laughs> now my problem is uh, I'm still going to have to try and pull out a little bit more blue, uh, which can get a little bit clunky and could cause some issues with the stars. Uh, but uh, do I still have uh, my star mask? Let, oop, almost closed it. I think I can do a little bit better of a job on a star mask, though. Uh, we'll see. Um, uh, let me think here. Star mask first, uh, structure growth, it's large scale a little bit less because I don't want it to um, grow much larger than the stars. I want it to be kind of a tighter star mask. Uh, let's give that a shot, see what happens.
The one thing I didn't do on this, uh, which I did do on the first image, uh, uh, deconvolution. And uh, for some reason, uh, deconvolution really can. Uh, there, there are ways around having issues with your stars with deconvolution, but for some reason, my workflow uh, doesn't always work in that way. And uh, so I, I chose not to do it. I feel like there's a lot of detail, though, in this that uh, would come out either way. Decon might give you just a little, little bit more, but uh, I can't see there being that much. Uh, so let's see. Uh, that star mask looks good to me. Uh, got the star mask. I'm not really worried about that star right there. Uh, let's see if I can't uh, saturate out some blue without touching much else. Uh, I'm going to boost the range. Uh, the blues, well, I can see where the blue tones are right here. Oh. Let's see. Uh, And my, my apologies for not really explaining these tools. Hopefully, uh, most of you guys are familiar with PixInsight at least a little bit. And uh, you, basically, just by seeing what I'm doing, you're, you're learning about it. Uh, if you have specific questions, I'd be glad to answer them. But uh, this is kind of just, uh, it's one of those things where if you don't use PixInsight, if you use Photoshop, but you watch what I'm doing, you can probably apply the same techniques. Um, and you can see by selectively hitting that blue region, uh, I'm able to pull a little bit more blue out, still protection on the stars. Now I can see, uh, I can already see what in rendition, uh, I should say, uh, re revision to uh, uh, Part D because I've done this what four times I've done that I've reprocessed this four times in the last couple of days uh, and originally I reprocessed it maybe twenty times uh, but I can already see what I would do on my next revision this star right here this star right here slight halos around them uh, probably one of the earlier star masks but the star color is great uh, it's not overly blue um, star color looks great all right what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess it up for myself. Uh, actually, first, uh, I haven't locked this in yet. Uh, see what happens if I give it a touch more blue. That's about all the blue I can do without getting a bit more crazy. Let's see. Uh, pull the mask. So that is what it looks like right now. Uh, and hop back over to this. Okay, uh, so now looks like my stars might be a bit tighter here. That was probably the deconvolution, but the color is off on them. Uh, the nebula, maybe a little bit more pinky tangerine, uh, whereas I think yellow over here and blue. Um, so let's see. Uh, Sorry, I'm trying to think my way through this one because what I think, uh, what I think I would want to do and I think would actually help it would be, uh, let me see, the star mask is still on here. Let me remove the mask. Let me go to curves. Reset it, give myself a preview.
Yeah, I think uh, just pulling down a little bit on the, the darker areas is going to help reveal some of this uh, swirly foreground dark dust. Uh, I might, let me think, it, it's coming off a little bit too yellow. Might want a little bit golder, uh, which I believe, I think I would have to add red to yellow to get it. Uh, but it is messing up the background. So I'm going to pull down on that. Uh, yeah. I'm liking what that is doing. I am going to apply that. Um, I still have room for a little bit of noise reduction. Uh, but before I do the noise reduction, I'm going to test this out because I always like to see what this does on it. The Dark Structure Enhanced script uh, basically does everything for me. I click OK, and uh, if all goes well, uh, it'll enhance basically all the foreground dark structure. Problem in an image like this is a lot of the dark structure might be embedded inside of the nebula, so sometimes it makes it look a little bit fake. Uh, which is why I say I always try it, uh, and sometimes it looks great, sometimes it doesn't. Not just on nebula, sometimes on uh, galaxies with uh, dust lanes. So you can see it enhanced it. It looks kind of good. Pulled that out, uh, got some foreground here. This looks a bit more like a foreground cloud. Might have gone a little overboard with this. Let's see. Let's uh, check what it looked like. Before after yeah it, it looks better now looks better after um let's see one trick for eking a little bit of extra detail out hdr multi tri multi scale transform uh i am going to see what it does first without a star mask so that I can figure out whether I want to use it. Um, okay, I am going to want to use it. It's definitely uh, adding visually to the image. Um, so I've got my star mask, pull it over here, invert it, hide it. That looked pretty good as it was. Um, so I apply it and wait. Uh, let's see here. The spot that this is, oops, spots that this is really going to help are going to be the detail areas uh, between the like brighter areas and the dimmer. So like this stuff right here. Just helps reveal more. Uh, also uh, allows you then to put a slight bit more stretch on it. Uh, still lock the dimmer end. Oh, I gotta get my preview. Still lock the dimmer end. Can bring that up a bit more. Wow, that that uh, protection that the star mask is giving me is just uh, allowing me to really boost that up. Um, I, I stretched it pretty far, but I don't think I overstretched it. So I applied it, coming back to the image. Um, I don't know, it might have, might have fallen apart a little bit, but what I am going to do is I am going to... Remove the mask, 
let's try and give you a good view of this. Um, looks pretty darn good. There's, there's just detail all over the place. A little bit of noise has moved into uh, the dim areas, a little bit blue noise. Uh, but what I actually think might help me work that out, that same ACDNR, uh, now that I'm working on an RGB image, I can use the chromi uh, chrominance noise reduction, which just does a great job uh, of killing chrominance noise uh, at the same time as the, light, uh, as the luminous noise. Uh, I'm going to make the preview. This time, my mask is going to look a lot different. Um, there's not much noise in these areas. There's a little bit of noise here. Uh, that mask actually looks pretty good for what I want to do because I want a lot of noise reduction down there. I might let this go like that. Uh, so I just get a touch of protection over some of the nebula. Gives it a little bit of uh, noise remaining, but it might also let me do another pass on it. Uh, I'm going to try it at default settings. Um, oh, actually, uh, with ACDNR, I get a real-time preview, uh, unlike the other tools. Uh, so this looks pretty aggressive in the noise reduction, uh, or at least in the... Um, no, there's no grain left. Might actually look good, but uh, I do sometimes like to leave a little bit of noise. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it makes it look a little bit more natural. Uh, and as I pull that down, uh, you know, if you can't tell the difference, apply less. And that is just the lightness I'm working on. So it's looking pretty good to me. Uh, but the chrominance, I still, uh, I, I'm not crazy about the chrominance noise in here. So I want to make sure I'm applying enough of that. Um, actually not sure whether I want to, I think I want to increase the standard deviation on this. Uh, let me try decreasing it. All right. I think it is just not doing anything to the particular area I'm looking at. So I'm going to put it back to two. Uh, I'm going to apply it. Oops. Back to two. I'm going to apply it here, and I'm, I'm actually looking down here, um, which I know is a troublesome area in the image because I remember it. But uh, it's uh, basically just a little bit noisy in the blue channel, or a lot of bit noisy in the blue channel, a little bit noisy in the H alpha channel. Uh, there is some structure there but it wasn't quite enough. Uh, the, the amount of time I put in wasn't enough to bring it out. So it gives me a little bit of a bluey, greeny kind of mess. Uh, but that said, um, I don't know. I'm pretty happy with the way this one turned out. Uh, the image I was trying to improve upon right here. Huh, I don't know. Did I do better? What, well, let's see. This is what I did earlier today. This is what I did just now. This is what I did four years ago. I don't know, much softer. I don't know, did I improve upon it? What do you guys think? I think it looks good. The, um, <clears throat> your first version of four years ago is definitely has more orange and less green in it, but the, the stars are better looking in the new version. Yeah, and you know, that's what happens. Uh, you go into it with one goal. Oh, I want to make the stars look better, and then of course, uh, it's a you're compromising other things. 
Uh, but yeah, I do think it looks, uh, I don't know. It's hard to say which one I like more. I'm surprised I was able to get that much noise reduction on this. And it, I actually did a great job on this bottom corner here. Um, very, I don't know. This is a nice image, except for those stars, but um, fun, fun one to pass. Adam, it's, hard, it's hard for us necessarily with all our different monitors and our reduced uh, resolution and things like that to maybe get a good idea of what actually um, is there. But uh, the fact that you did this in, what, 40 minutes or something like that, it's also got to be a little taxing for you. you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and trying to semi-explain. Um, yeah. You, do, you can do a better job when you're just uh, specifically uh, uh, doing it for you as opposed to trying to uh, show it off. Yeah, somebody has a bad cough. Basically, everyone in our house has a bad cough. Everyone at my son's school, everyone at my daughter's school. Uh, this winter makes me want to uh, move south. This was a bad one. <clears throat> there was certainly a lot of value in watching you get through the process, and I think that's that's the best part of, of watching this on this channel was um, even, even for people who use PII, I certainly picked up on a few tools that you use that I don't and stuff that I'd normally um, run over to Photoshop to do. Um, so as a, as a quick run through of an image, it's, there's certainly a lot of value for us here. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad uh, you guys just got to see me walk through it. I've uh, sometimes we have. Uh, so. Uh, People who we consider really experts, uh, like Warren and uh, and uh, I'll even say Eric, uh, or uh, people who have put out uh, just amazing images, APOD quality images, or have won multiple APODs. Uh, but everyone has their own techniques, so it's nice to see a lot of people walk through it. Uh, hope it helped. Did you, did you notice that there was uh, there was a couple of comments here, but the um, would you like to comment on the uh, uh, photometric-based uh, calibration, color calibrations? Um, would the, the okay, would the, yeah. yeah the, uh, the uh, uh, would it work on this image? If I were doing a natural bicolor image, uh, then uh, I might use it. Um, I, I don't have time to show that off right now. I did it, what? Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, I did a natural bicolor image, and that might be why you're asking about that. Uh, but because this one does not have a natural palette, because this one's kind of a, I don't, I, I don't want to say it's kind of a Hubble palette, but it is kind of a Hubble palette. Um, well, wait, it, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why would it matter whether it had? Um, Whatever it started with, I mean, what you what that photometric calculation? I'm just trying to understand what the photometric All program right. does. It goes and 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 it plate solves, figures out where you're looking, and uh, it decides what the color of those various stars are going to be. And the fact that you've got it in bicolor or some strange, unnatural color, why should that bother it? Well, it's not that it bothers it. It's just that. Uh, the the, pho the the point of the photometric color calibration is to kind of have some sort of science, like maintain that scientific integrity to the colors of the stars. But with right. narrow band, there's no point in maintaining scientific integrity to the colors of the stars. Oh, it, that's true. There's no point to it, but it would go ahead and make, wouldn't it? I mean, maybe somebody else knows this. I haven't played with it, it yet. It, it, Would, it, wouldn't it make everything um, the right color? Wouldn't make the stars the right color? Well, what's the right color? The right color is photometrically. Uh, that's the point of the photometric calibration. I mean, they but, know what the right color is. But if you're if you're using Hubble palette, right, then there is no real right color. Um, it would like it's it. Okay, but if you wanted the actual colors of the stars, if you wanted the colors that were really represented by scientific photometric calculations, 
even though the rest of the thing would be in double color. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems to me that you could go ahead and do that. It might look stranger, but at the stars, maybe that's a good way to get rid of the, the phony colors and stars when you're um, when you're doing uh, narrow band imaging. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. I'm not quite sure. Um, if yeah, I don't be think any of us have enough experience with that whole thing to know what we're talking about on yeah. that. I thought it was a stretch uh, that I was using it for bicolor narrow band. And David said, well, no, because, I mean, his thinking was kind of the mm -hmm. same as mine is, you're going for a semi-natural palette anyway. So you're just kind of artistically steering it into the way you want, even though you're using a really technical tool. Uh, so at this, uh, photometric color calibration might kind of do the same thing. Uh, it's a really specific and technical tool that's used to be that you really should use a specific way, uh, but if yeah. you use it a different way and you get good results, then maybe you're okay with it, right? Yeah. Be interesting to try. It. Yeah, it's it's worth a try. I I the, I probably wouldn't use it on this one because I had in mind how I wanted it to do. I really did a lot of manual, um, by by doing the non-linear combination by doing the panel the, the color combination after i stretched it um it gives me more control over the final colors of the image whereas if i did it mm -hmm. in uh when it was uh still linear it kind of gave pix insight more control over it yeah. um i had to do it their way whereas this way i was able to kind of destroy it my way if that makes sense i hope that makes sense um yeah and edmund's saying then it would be rgb stars and narrow band um which yes uh i i, I have to try that I'll, I'll give that a shot uh I'm trying to think it, i should be able to get it uh, I, I should be able to figure it out and i'll maybe i'll bring it maybe we'll talk about something like that next week um, there are actually a few tools that I wanted to dig kind of deeper into. Uh, so if we don't have a lot of people emailing me about all, all the awesome stuff that they saw at Neath, then, uh, we'll do a bit more processing. Um, right. what about the plate? What about the plate solving, Adam? Uh, not for next week, right? We just are looking for someone who, uh, is proficient okay. in... Right. Here's, the, here's the situation, guys. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some a little bit about the basics of plate solving, what it is, how it works, in general, the theoretical algorithms for it and stuff like that. Not that I know that stuff, but there's enough access on Wikipedia that I can figure it out. And it was fascinating to me what plate solving really works. I really didn't understand it much until I sat down with um, one of the guys who wrote uh, the uh, the Sky X and uh, talk to him about how he actually plate solves and stuff like that. So um, I, I got a, enough of a sense of it that I think I can tell you how that works. And I can tell you how it's used in SGP and some of the things you have to worry about when you're using plate solving. The problem is that I've used plate solving in Pix Insight, in um, uh, plate, and plate Solve 2, and in Pinpoint, and... Um, you know, I know how to, I know some hints and some things to tell people about it, but I don't know much about Astro Tortilla. I don't know about uh, uh, Astro Bin, what, whatever happens in plate solving up there. I don't know that stuff because I've never gone there. So my presentation on plate solving would be relatively short, and we need somebody else to step forward and say, hey, I, I can hook you up with, I use, I use Astro Bin all the time or Astro Tortilla all the time, and, and I know what the pitfalls of it are and stuff like that. We need you to contact Adam so that he can hook you up and connect you into the program whenever we get around to doing it. Now, I agree, Adam, that next week we should do uh, NEEF because by then you probably get some feedback on NEEF and happens like that. Um, if we don't get any feedback, then I can do the thing on plate solving and we can work that out. The other point is that I'll be in Texas the week after that and I think the week after that again. So I'll be gone for two weeks while I'm traveling to Texas and back. Uh, for the Texas Star Party. And um, 
So we'd have to put off the plate solving thing till then. But that's what I know. Okay. Well, you heard we're looking for help with plate solving. We're looking for help with me. Uh, a few different ways uh, you can help out. Um, if you need to contact me uh, on our website, there's a contact form. That's the best way to get me. Uh, that said, uh, thank you guys all for watching. Um, hey, wait, 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 Edmund has got a comment on the, on the comment, um, Edmund, uh, remember we were discussing about using the photometric, uh, calibration yes. for the, um, for that. He said it would be RGB stars with narrow band of false color, um, uh, and that's, that's true. And that he has actually tried it. And uh, it's tough to get the proper star mask, he says, and uh, a few other things. But anyway, it's, I, I think it's probably worth a little diddle and try to figure out what happens when you do that. Wouldn't that be cool? Anyway, okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Alex. Thanks, Edmund. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, see you guys next week. Good night. Good night.